Hi everyone! This module will take you through a step-by-step -step guide of how to use Doppler to avoid vascular puncture prior to procedures. The purpose of this module is to help clinicians use Doppler properly to avoid lacerating or puncturing vessels. By the end of this module, the listener should be able to properly use Doppler to identify the presence or absence of vessels within the needle trajectory pathway, as well as be able to identify at least four causes of false negatives for a scan that demonstrate no flow. Given the large variety of ultrasound devices currently available, this video intends to be device agnostic. We will discuss the relevant functions and settings in general, and it is recommended that you identify where those functions and settings could be accessed on the device available to you. First, we will review basic anatomy relevant for two commonly performed bedside procedures, paracentesis and thoracentesis. For paracentesis, it is important to know the course of the inferior epigastric vessels. The inferior epigastric artery comes off the external iliac artery, just superior to the inguinal ligament, and ascends superiorly and medially towards the umbilicus, deep to the rectus abdominis muscle, and eventually joins the superior epigastric artery near the umbilicus. Along its course, its branches supply various structures in the abdominal wall. To find the inferior epigastric vessels, use a high-frequency linear probe. With the transducer marker pointing to the patient's right, Place the transducer transversely on the abdomen, lateral to the umbilicus, and above the inguinal ligament. Once the vessels are identified, slide the transducer cranially to follow the vessels. On the right is what you might see on ultrasound. Superficially, you will see the subcutaneous tissue. Underneath, you will find the rectus abdominis muscle, enclosed by the anterior and the posterior rectus sheath. Deep to that, you might see a bright hyperechoic line which is the peritoneal line. The inferior epigastric vessels will be seen as hypochoic structures running just deep to the rectus abdominal muscle above the posterior rectus sheath. In the case of thoracentesis, the relevant vessels are the intercostal vessels, which travel in a bundle containing the intercostal vein, artery, and nerve, typically along the inferior aspect of the ribs as shown in this diagram. When evaluating a pleural effusion in a longitudinal plane, at least 10 centimeters laterally from the spine, with the transducer marker pointed cranially, slide the transducer inferiorly down the posterior chest. Once an adequate fluid collection is identified, the probe should then be exchanged for a high-frequency linear transducer to identify the intercostal vessels. The image on the right shows what you might see on ultrasound. Here, you can see the subcutaneous tissue. Beneath this, you will see the rib, which will typically appear as a bright, rounded, hyperechoic line, with the posterior acoustic shadowing behind it. To help orient you, we have outlined the superior and the inferior aspect of the rib. Here you will see a pleural effusion, as well as the lung tip within the effusion. Just inferior to the rib, to the right of the rib on the image, you will see an intercostal vessel picked up on power Doppler. Given that we know the expected location of the vessels, why do we need to use Doppler before doing a paracentesis and thoracentesis? Even though we are traditionally taught that intercostal vessels run just inferior to the rib, prior studies have shown significant variability in the location of the neurovascular bundle, with almost half of patients' intercostal vessels lying directly above the rib. Here is an example of an intercostal space with vessels present both inferior to the rib as well as an additional vessel picked up just superior to the rib below. Therefore, inserting the needle above this rib will risk vascular injury. In the case of patients with cirrhosis, the abdominal wall anatomy may be distorted by ascites, making the location of the inferior epigastric vessels less predictable. Further, collateral vessels may be present. In this example of a right lower quadrant clip, superficial vessels can be seen using power Doppler. While paracentesis is generally considered a safe procedure, Laceration of the inferior epigastric artery, or one of its large branches, is associated with significant morbidity and even mortality. For this reason, using ultrasound to identify abdominal wall vessels pre-procedure to reduce the risk of bleeding complications is recommended both by the Society of Hospital Medicine as well as the Canadian Internal Medicine Ultrasound Group. Let's go over how to use Doppler to identify the presence or absence of vessels pre-procedure. First, it is important to select the appropriate transducer. Before paracentesis and thoracentesis, to assess for superficial vessels, it is recommended that you use a linear array high-frequency transducer, shown on the left. 
This transducer allows you to evaluate superficial structures. If you do not have a linear array transducer, or if the structure is much deeper than 5 cm, using a low frequency array is better than not using one, but you are operating at much lower sensitivity for vessel assessments, and therefore this is not recommended. Now let's go over transducer placement. To confirm the presence or absence of vessels, you should perform both a positive and a negative control. In a positive control, place the probe over where you expect to see the vessels. Here we have an example of identifying the inferior epigastric vessels as we saw before. The operator carefully scans the area to identify the epigastric vessels. Positive identification confirms their presence and lets the operator know which area to avoid when performing the procedure. In negative control, the ultrasound probe is positioned where you plan to do the procedure, in this case the right lower quadrant. Here using Doppler, the operator scans the area to ensure the absence of vessels. It is important that you perform both a positive and a negative control because as you'll see later in the video, there are many reasons why a Doppler signal could be negative even when there are vessels in the area scanned. Next, adjust depth. It is important to adjust the depth to ensure that the skin and tissues above the peritoneum or the pleural line are easily visualized. The video on the left has too much depth, making the skin, soft tissues, and vessel beneath the rib quite small. By decreasing depth, as shown in the image on the right, this allows for much better visualization of relevant structures. Now let's discuss Doppler. There are three main types of Doppler that many, but not all, devices are equipped with. Color, spectral, and power. Doppler modalities relevant for identifying and ruling at vessels prior to performing procedure are color and power. There are some differences between color and power Doppler that are important to recognize. First, color Doppler is typically available on most devices whereas power Doppler may not always be available, particularly on older devices. Color Doppler may miss vessels if the transducer is perpendicular to the vessel or at 90 degree angle of insulation. Power Doppler is less likely to miss vessels regardless of the angle of insulation. Please see previous Doppler teaching sessions for a further review of this topic. Lastly, color Doppler is less sensitive to low flow and thus may miss low flow vessels whereas power Doppler is more sensitive to low flow, and thus it is often the modality of choice when identifying vessels prior to procedures, such as Thor and paracentesis, as these are typically low flow vessels. However, given its sensitivity, it is very prone to flash artifacts and therefore requires a very steady hand. Once we've applied Doppler, the next step is adjusting the color or power Doppler box. The color box refers to the region of interest within the ultrasound image where the Doppler is applied to visualize and assess blood flow. The machine will only apply Doppler to the areas contained within the color box. Ideally, the color box should be adjusted to contain as large of the area as you are interested in without capturing relevant tissue. Here on the left is an example of improper placement of the color box. As you can see, many blood vessels would likely to be missed, as the area where the Doppler will be provided is very small and superficial thus any deep vessels would not be picked up. On the right, the operator has expanded the color box to adequately evaluate all of the subcutaneous tissue and muscle where blood vessels could be located. Note that the color box is not extended below the peritoneum, as movement below here would be subject to movement artifacts from bowel or ascites. When applying the color box, it is important to ensure the box captures the entire abdominal wall, especially when performing negative control to be able to properly assess for the absence of blood vessels. Next, we will talk about adjusting the velocity scale, or flow. These show the locations on the screen where you will see your scale, though this will vary from machine to machine. Here on the left, the scale is on low flow settings, with max velocity at 4.9 centimeters a second, whereas the right hand image shows medium flow settings, with max velocity at 12.2 centimeters per second. Every machine is different, so make sure to familiarize yourself with where the scale is seen on the screen as well as how to adjust the scale, which may be labeled as flow or pulse repetition frequency or PRF, depending on the device used. Here on the left, the scale is on low flow settings. We can see both arterial and venous flow. However, there is more flash artifact, which we can see here, which can potentially obscure other vessels. On the right, the scale is now set on medium flow setting, 
As you can see, Venus flow is now missed, but there is no flash artifact seen. For the purposes of assessing Profesel's pre-procedure, the flow should be set as low as possible to avoid missing low flow vessels. Once we have the optimal scalar flow, the next step is to adjust color or power gain. This is usually the same button that adjusts B mode gain, which then becomes color or power gain once you are in Doppler mode. Gain will change how much signal you are picking up from the Doppler itself. High gain, as you can see in the left, will pick up vessels, but will also result in significant artifact. The correct technique is to always start with excessive gain, then reduce the gain down slowly until you are confident that you have picked up a vessel which will be seen as a consistent pulsation. This way, you will not miss a vessel by under gain, as if the gain is too low, you will not pick up any signals. To fully evaluate a sufficient area prior to procedure, we need to scan more than a single plane. Assuming you've confirmed an absence of vessels in the location illustrated by the grey bar in the left, you should then scan one probe width superiorly in the location illustrated by the blue bar to ensure that it is also vessel free in that location. Next, slide two probe widths inferiorly to where the orange bar is and repeat vessel assessment there. If all three locations are vessel free, this gives you higher confidence that you will be at lower risk for vessel injury. Alternatively, you can scan through in two planes, a cardinal rule in POCUS where one view is no view. Scanning three probe widths or more sequentially should similarly allow you to map out a sufficient vessel free area for your procedure. Let's review the step-by-step -step process we just covered. First, using a linear array transducer, adjust the depth to optimize your image in the center of your screen. Apply Doppler. Adjust your velocity to detect low flow vessels. Maximize the color or power box to capture all of the structures that may contain vessels and increase gain until there is significant aliasing. Then dial it down to still pick up flow while reducing the surrounding aliasing. Hold still to prevent movement artifact. As discussed, these steps will be performed in two sequences, first by finding vessels you want to avoid with positive control, and then over the site you intend to insert your needle to confirm the absence of vessels or negative control. Once you have performed these steps, you are ready to perform your procedure. Next, let's go over common pitfalls. On the left, we could be fooled thinking there is no vessel in this area. However, Looking at our scale, our velocity is set very high at 56 centimeters per second. Ultrasound is only able to pick up vessels at a minimum 10% of the set scale, thus any vessel lower than 5.6 centimeters per second will be missed. On the right, we see that there are indeed vessels, now evident once the scale is adjusted to a lower velocity. Applying too much pressure may compress superficial vessels, thus tricking us to believe that there are no vessels in this area. On the left, we have a transverse view of the abdominal wall. With this view, you could be convinced that there are no vessels in the area, given the lack of color Doppler signal. However, the operator is applying significant downward pressure on the abdominal wall with a probe, thus compressing the vessels, resulting in no signal. The same exact view on the right, once the operator releases the pressure, allowing the vessels to open up, the signal returns. No settings were adjusted. All that changed was the pressure applied to the probe. Thus, when evaluating an area with a transducer probe, it is important to apply very light pressure so that we are not compressing superficial vessels. Having insufficient color or power gain may miss vessels. On the left, you may think that there are no vessels in this area. However, this is due to our gain settings being low and the machine is thus not picking up adequate signal. Here on the right, we point out where there is in fact an artery that was missed. It is important to note here that the vessels were missed even despite having a low velocity setting, which normally picks up very low flow vessels. By increasing gain, the vessel is now visualized as seen on the image on the left. It is thus important that we ensure not only adequate velocity or scale, but also sufficient gain to avoid missing vessels. Conversely, while too low of gain can miss vessels, having too much color or power gain is also problematic and will obscure vessels. A similar appearance may also occur if there is too much movement, so it's important to hold the transducer still. Next, failure to adjust the color box can result in missed blood vessels. On the left, we see a color box that is too small. While it has picked up a vessel signal, 
It is only evaluating a small area of the tissue, with potential vessels in the superficial subcutaneous tissue or in the muscle lateral to the box that would be missed. The video on the right illustrates this point, with a small superficial vessel at the top right of the screen that is only seen as the box is covering all of the superficial structures. It is therefore important to enlarge the color or power box to cover the entire region of interest to avoid missing vessels. As we've mentioned with color Doppler, but not with power Doppler, scanning perpendicular to the vessel has the potential to miss flow due to a 90 degree angle of incination. Here on the left, you may be fooled to think that there is not a vessel in the area, when in reality, no signal is picked up as the transducer is scanning directly perpendicular to the angle of the vessel, resulting in missed flow. On the right, the operator fans the transducer, changing the angle of incination, resulting in flow being detected. It is therefore important to always fan through structures, particularly when using color Doppler, to avoid missing vessels. Now we'll summarize the pitfalls that we just reviewed. Velocity set too high will miss vessels. Too much pressure can compress superficial vessels. Insufficient color or power gain will miss vessels. Too much color or power gain or movement may obscure vessels. Too small of a color or power box will miss surrounding vessels. And failure to fan when using color Doppler may miss vessels if scanning perpendicular to the vessel. That brings us to the end of our module. We hope you take away the following messages. First, Doppler should be used in every procedure to properly identify overlying vessels so that these can be safely avoided. Using a step-by-step -step process can help ensure consistency with each procedure. And lastly, we hope that you are aware of the potential pitfalls of Doppler to avoid misidentifying or missing vessels and structures. Thanks for listening. Please feel free to contact us with any questions that you have. Please also visit the Simis website using the link or the QR code here for more resources and videos.